Welcome to the world of Simply Talking Podcast, where we delve deep into intriguing conversations that spark curiosity, challenge perspectives, and inspire change. In this episode, we take a closer look at the captivating dialogue between renowned journalist Don Lemon and visionary entrepreneur Elon Musk, as they explore a myriad of thought-provoking subjects that shape our modern world. As Don Lemon engages Elon Musk in a riveting discussion, the spotlight shines on X.com Comma, a platform revolutionizing the way we consume news and paving the way for the future of journalism. Musk's insights on the evolving landscape of media and the significance of free speech provide a glimpse into his visionary approach to information dissemination. From dissecting the complexities of social media to delving into the nuances of platform moderation, the conversation navigates through the intricate web of contemporary issues that define our digital age. Elon Musk's candid reflections on political viewpoints coupled with his forward-looking perspective on technology and society offer a compelling glimpse into the mind of one of the world's most influential figures. Furthermore, Musk sheds light on Tesla's upcoming innovations, giving us a peek into the future of sustainable transportation and cutting-edge technology. Addressing controversies surrounding his social media presence, including contentious topics like the Great Replacement Theory and his unconventional approach to mental health with ketamine, Musk fearlessly confronts the challenges of being a public figure in the digital era. Join us as we unravel the multifaceted layers of this captivating dialogue, exploring the intersection of politics, social media dynamics, mental health advocacy, and the ethical responsibilities of tech pioneers in shaping our collective future. Tune into Simply Talking Podcast and embark on a journey of discovery and enlightenment with us. Um... Well, I, I guess I do in, enjoy using the platform. I mean, I do call um, the X platform the, the PvP or player versus player uh, platform. Um, so in video games, there's uh, player versus like environment um, where you're not playing against other people. Um, and then there's PvP, which is like hardcore. You're actually playing against other people. And uh, so, But that's blowing off steam for you. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is to some degree, not always. I mean, obviously I use it for, uh, to post jokes, to post, uh, you know, sometimes trivia, uh, sometimes things that are of great importance. Uh, so you do a lot of it at night, like late at night. So when you're doing this, are you are you sober when you do it? <laughs> Almost always, yeah. under the influence of anything? Uh, no, I don't, I don't drink, I don't really, no, I, no. So you got no drink, no smoke, no nothing. I mean, you smoke pot with Rogan. I had one puff. Yeah, I think anyone who smokes pot can tell I don't know how to, how to smoke pot. But you've admitted that you've had you have a ketamine prescription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that for? Well, I mean, it's pretty private to ask somebody about a medical prescription, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's I think it's, it's something I'd say like uh, th there are times when I have um, sort of. Uh, I don't know, like a, like a negative chemical state in my in my brain, uh, like depression, I guess, you know, is or, or, or like depression that's not linked to any negative views, um, and 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 then uh, ketamine is helpful for uh, getting getting one outside out of a negative frame of mind. Well, listen, I, 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 in fact, I generally, obviously, I'm not a doctor, but I would say, uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to the doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. Listen, I, I think that um, ketamine uh, and drug therapy is uh, increasingly becoming more in the mainstream. Yeah. Do you think it, you're doing it under a doctor's care, right? Yeah, yeah. Literally a, pres a prescription from an actual, a real doctor, not like, you know. Yeah. But do you, um, do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. If you use too much ketamine, you can't really get work done. Yes. But I have a lot of work. So I'm, I'm typically putting in like, you know, 16 hour days. That's normal for me. And it's, it's, it's rare for me to even take off a weekend day. So I don't really have like, you know, a situation where I can be not mentally acute for an extended period of time. Like I can't, it's, I can't really get wasted with when, uh, cause I can't get my work done. So how often do you take it? Um, well, it's, it'd be like it's a small amount once every other week or something like that. 
But there's, I mean, it's not on the bottle where it says take this dose this many times a week or whatever. If it's yeah, not a doctor's the dose, I, I, it's, there, there are several weeks will go by where I don't use it. You don't use it. Yeah, I think it's like I said. I think the, the, the what I find kind of is if you if you like literally like a chemical state in your brain that you can't you can't just think yourself out of, then uh, ketamine can ha is helpful for getting you out of a depressive mind state. You suffer from depression or you have a depressive mind state? And I asked you as someone who has suffered from depression. I wouldn't say that I... I, I wouldn't say that I have like a, a case of like extended depression. Um, it's just once in a while I get into a, ne a negative sort of chemical mind state. Once in a while. It's not a, not a common thing. Um, but once in a while it does happen. Where do you think that comes from? I think it's just genetic, basically. You think it's just genetic history? I think so. Um... Yeah. I mean, some people are just wired wired to be happy all the time. Uh, some are, unfortunately, wired to be sad a lot of the time. Um, and in my case, uh, I'm, you know, I'm generally pretty, pretty positive and optimistic. Uh, but once in a while, uh, I don't know what happens. There's some, uh, like I said, I think it's just chemical tides in your brain once in a while. It's like a brain storm. Yeah. Do you ever worry that this may get in the way of your government contracts and clearances and also no. and wall street as well well from a standpoint of wall street uh what matters is uh, execution you know uh, are you building value for investors um and tesla is worth uh, about as much as the rest of the car industry combined from nothing so I, you know that's pretty good um as I mentioned, we had, we had the best-selling car on Earth last year. Um, so for, for an investor standpoint, if there is something I'm taking, I should keep taking it. Have you, you talk about your ketamine use and, and depression, have you, you also have said, and the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, the, like, the reason I mentioned uh, the, the ketamine prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, a great replacement theory. You claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? Right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here uh, if uh, legal immigrants, which I think have a, a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, it's a very strong bias to vote Democrat, um, the, the more, more that come into the country, the more they're likely to vote uh, in that direction. But it, it is, in my view, uh, an, the, a simple incentive to increase uh, voters, to Democrat voters. Um, uh, and, yeah, so the question is, like, how? So there's, there's, a, few, there's a, a few ways that this works. One is that uh, when the census is done, uh, the census is based on all, all people in an area, whether they are citizens, citizens or not. So uh, if there are a concentration of uh, people who came here illegally in, in, a, in a particular state or uh, in a particular state, that state will actually then get uh, an increased number of house seats. So the, the house seat apportionment is proportionate to the number of people, not the number of citizens. So the, 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 the illegals overwhelmingly go to places like California and New York. Um, and the, if you just look at the, look at the math, if, if, if you look at the apportionment with and without illegals, I believe California would lose, I believe, I believe the blue state, there would be a net loss of blue states of approximately 20 seats in the House. Uh, this also applies to the, the Electoral College. So you say, like, well, this also applies to, to electing the president. Because it, the, the, the same, the electoral votes are also done by, by apportionment the same way that House seats are done. But the reason, Elon, the Electoral College is in place is to, to balance that, is so that that doesn't happen. So what you're saying about it is the exact opposite of the reason yeah. why the, the Electoral College is there. The Electoral College at this point, it, at this point in, in our history, gives people who are in smaller states and red states 
much more of an influence over our elections than people who are in blue states and the majority of the people in this country. That's what the Electoral College does. It actually does the exact opposite of what you're saying. It protects people who are in smaller states and protects people who are in red states. Well, um, the red states I, because I, I, it tends I, I, to be I, I smaller think, and, and less populous. I think that best, that, that statement is, is uh, what, what you said is, is true, but what I said is also true, uh, which is that uh, if, uh, if, as is the case, a disproportionate number of legal immigrants go to uh, blue states, they amplify the effect of a, of a blue state vote. And the math, as I understand it, you can research this obviously very easily on there. It's, it's like, it's, it's pretty straightforward to, to research this. But my understanding is that there would be, uh, that, that the, the Democrats would lose approximately 20 seats in the House uh, if illegals were not counted in census. And that's also 20 less electoral votes for president. So the legals absolutely do affect the, the uh, who controls uh, the House of Co the House and who controls uh, the presidency. It does not affect uh, the Senate. Yeah. In blue states, you're talking about. I yes. don't believe that your information on on uh, that is right. Um, so listen, the, let's talk more about the Great Replacement because the first time that you did, you posted on X about uh, this Jewish conspiracy. You ended up apologizing. I didn't call it a, a conspiracy. I, I just said that there's a simple matter of incentives. You don't need a conspiracy when you have basic incentives. In my view, there's a basic incentive that's fundamental uh, that uh, for, for the Democrat, Democrat Party to foster and, and usher in a large number of illegals. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and you don't need a conspiracy in that case because you have a very basic incentive. You could say I'm wrong about that incentive, but that's my view. I, I'm not buying into I didn't, I, buying some great replacement theory. I'm simply saying there appears to be a very clear incentive for uh, uh, Democrats to have to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about the great replacement theory is also part of a Jewish conspiracy theory. And when you did the tweet or you responded to the tweet about that, you ended up apologizing, and which I think is, you know, it's good that you ended up apologizing. You went to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Right? So you said you learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when it when you apologized and you said you went to Auschwitz, you saw what... what no, I was already, already aware of, of, of these things. And the nature of my comment that, that really inflamed people, um, what, I was, what I was trying to say, and I did very quickly clarify, this is what I'm saying, is that uh, um, a number of uh, prominent uh, Jewish philanthropists fund uh, groups that they should really take a closer look at funding because some of the, some of the groups they fund, um, I think, are anti-Semitic. Do you understand the connection between the two? There one, there's a connection between you said Democrats, the Great Replacement Theory, but when it comes to the actual Great Replacement Theory, originally it was started about Jewish people, as you said, flooding in the country, and then now people are using it for Democrats, saying the same thing about Democrats. Flooding... In my view, it's a simple matter of incentives. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, don't, I actually don't see an incentive for uh, Jewish people to want to have illegal immigration. I don't, I don't think there is such an incentive. I don't. The Great Replacement Theory is a, a neo-Nazi trope. It's in the neo-Nazi manifesto. It's in the Turner Diaries. It's referenced by the Buffalo Mass Shooter uh, in his manifesto where 10 people, um, black people, were murdered in Buffalo. It's the actual title of the Christchurch Shooter's Manifesto. 51 people in the Muslim mosque were murdered. 23 people uh, murdered in El Paso by a shooter who used the same language that you use in that manifesto when you say Hispanic invasion. Is that not... I didn't say an Hispanic invasion. And you tweeted, you quoted a tweet that said, that called it a Hispanic invasion. If I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything, every image. It's just something that I want, I think this is something worth people should uh, consider. Why would you quote something that you didn't believe? Because anything I quote is going to have a whole range of statements. It doesn't mean I agree with everything in it. Do you think if there, if, if you moderated yourself more if there was better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates I don't to have to answer these questions. The great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that I don't have to answer questions from reporters? Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So you don't think you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly. I could care less. It, you don't. You don't care. No, I don't. Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. 
They're terrible judges of character. Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care, you don't think that there's, you have any X.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating the platform? No, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media, and I think the media is uh, not truthful. Well, not with just the, the media. I mean, just the truth in general. Uh, I care about the truth very much. That's why we have, for example, community, community notes on the YEX system um, where... Uh, in order for community notes to surface and uh, provide corrective information about what somebody posts, and, and my posts are equally subject to this. My, I've been a community noted many times. Um, the, in order for, for a community notes to surface, uh, people who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that, you, do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law, and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown, uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. Uh, we don't want to put our thumb on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it, go, it went down. The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts but not count the number of views. So what matters is was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, and if you look at the number of views of how... how how many, how many times was his content viewed on our platform? It is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted. Why are they still there? Did you... Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings, attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying. No, I don't love censorship. Then why are, we, why are you asking? I believe censorship? in moderation, but I, I don't believe in... Censorship is a, is a... Moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not, you know... Look, if something's not illegal, censorship. we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech? I mean, you don't put out child porno pornography. That's not... It's illegal. Some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don. You know, I, I literally said, if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay, but if it is not legal, the, 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 the laws in this country are, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. So if those laws are put in place uh, by the by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, we I agree. agree. To the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Okay, agreed. Uh, with the law but if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing you don't feel there's you have any responsibility not to do that uh when 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 the people who I are mean, doing I, it I admittedly are saying those articles all the time that lead to to violence and killing um so don't they shouldn't they it's like you're applying a differential standard to uh, but that would never that would never be in mainstream media these types of images that type of language those things would never be we'd never in main, when I was in mainstream media we'd never promote things that um, would would be anti-semitic we would never promote things that would either 
Did you, did you, did you not see those? You said promote. If, if content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. No, but you can think of that, that's because the mainstream media is has like whatever twenty articles a day. Uh, we have five hundred million posts today. Okay, five hundred million. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The rules. The, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is uh, I, that we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that. But these are your own rules on your own platform. These, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you why no. are they still there. The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because... Which part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete these, these, these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. Hate speech. And so you don't consider that hate speech? <laughs> I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. There's, 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 if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So the, you, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not some, t- it's some tiny publication with like 20 articles today. It's 500 million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read it, Elon. So I think that, that, you don't have the opportunity to read the internet. Are you still, uh, suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but, but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility and your platform. And I, I, so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. We don't agree on this. Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at yes, all. Yes, you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there's, I think there... You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship... You want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. I and think, I think that everyone says it. And I and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person who of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law, um, and if people want the law changed, they should. Talk to, the elect- talk to their elected representative and get the law changed, and then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But I, I do think that there are there should be guardrails, and I believe in free speech as much as you. I would fight. I don't. I don't disagree. I don't agree with um, a lot of what you put out on social media. But I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So listen. Let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. All right. That's been a target of yours lately. On X. You. Uh, on. There was a repost of Ben Shapiro. That you claim that DEI is killing people. Specifically, you point to medicine. You claim that DEI programs are putting people at risk. Do you really believe this to be true? And what evidence do you have to support it? Um, what I was referring to there was that if, uh, if we lower the standards for doctors, uh, such so that they, you know, if, if the test for a doctor is lowered, uh, that, then the probability of them making a mistake and killing someone is obviously going to be higher. Wait, say that again. I'm not sure I understand what you said. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Actually. Yes. If if these if the standards for passing medical exams and becoming a doctor or, or especially something like a surgeon, if the standards are lowered. Uh, uh, then the probability that the surgeon will make a mistake is higher. They're making mistakes in their exam. They, they may make mistakes with people, and that may result in people dying. What evidence do you have, though, that they're lowering the standards? Uh, there is no evidence of that. Well, I your, believe there is. There's no evidence of that, Elon. But what, what is the evidence? I, I believe they have literally lowered the standards at, at Duke University, and that is what the article was referring to. There's no you evidence they have that. not lowered there's, the standards? There's no evidence about uh, lowering standards, and I think that there is... Um, Leave that as a false statement you're making. Okay. Well, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I think... The interesting thing is, when this is posted on the X platform, there will be a whole bunch of things that 
rebut what you said and what, what I said, right. so people can then make their own decision based on the replies, the rebuttals, and the community notes. I think that's fair, but I do think that w on this particular topic, I do think that you and Ben Shapiro are, are reaching in uh, about this, because there was a, what, it, what Ben posted said that people were, he gave instances of people who were deliberately uh, harming people. Um, nowhere in the thread does Ben suggest at all, I should say, that anyone is being killed as a, a result of DEI. Um, that's purely speculative. There's research on DEI and medicine, and there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, okay. that DEI is affecting medicine. Actually, like okay. on, only 5% of doctors yeah. are black, and a small percent... Yeah, my, well, I think you'll find ones. that when this is posted to the X platform, that uh, people will reply to it with evidence. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Okay. So, but that's my whole thing about moderation. Maybe you're wrong, but you'll put it out there. You don't know if it's right. Do you think that your responsibility to make sure something is right before you, the person who owns it, the Elon Musk, yeah. is a huge figure in the world, that you should know that it's true, that some of, there are people at X who can get research for you before you put something out there like that. That's not necessarily true, even in other examples. Um, if I say something that uh, is inaccurate, I'm immediately corrected on the platform. That's the advantage of a real-time uh, system like X. So there will be immediately in the replies cor people correcting me. There will be a community note that will correct me, um, which is attached to the actual post itself. Do you think as many people um, read that? Yes. Do you think as many people read that as it reads your tweet? Yes. In fact, and if, if there's a community note that happens uh, later that or somebody didn't see, but they replied to that, uh, or they interacted with that post, we will notify them that there is now a community note correcting that post. Mm -hmm. As we draw the curtains on this episode of Simply Talking Podcast, we reflect on the enlightening conversation between Don Lemon and Elon Musk that has left us pondering the intricate tapestry of issues that define our modern society. From the disruptive potential of X.com in reshaping the media landscape, to Musk's bold vision for the future of journalism, our minds have been stretched and our perspectives broadened. The engaging discourse on free speech, media ethics, and the evolving role of social media platforms has underscored the importance of critical thinking and responsible engagement in the digital age. Elon Musk's candid exploration of political viewpoints and his unwavering commitment to innovation have inspired us to embrace change and challenge the status quo with courage and conviction. As we bid farewell to this episode, we carry with us the resonance of Musk's insights on Tesla's upcoming ventures and his unapologetic stance on controversial topics, reminding us of the complexities and responsibilities that come with wielding influence in the public eye. The intersection of technology, media, and mental health advocacy has been a central theme in our discussion, prompting us to reflect on the ethical dilemmas and opportunities that lie ahead in our interconnected world. Join us in our ongoing journey of exploration and discovery on Simply Talking Podcast, where conversations like these serve as beacons of knowledge and catalysts for change. Let us continue to engage with curiosity, empathy, and open-mindedness as we navigate the ever-evolving landscape of ideas and innovation. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, keep the conversation flowing and the spirit of inquiry alive.